We're going to use Gauss Jordan elimination to solve this system of equations. We have 3x minus y minus z equal 2, x plus 2y plus z equal 4. Remember that Gauss Jordan elimination uses three row operations um, to transform a matrix into something that looks like this, something in row reduced echelon form. I wrote it over here as my goal. So we need to start here and we need to change this into an augmented matrix. So I'm going to take all the coefficients, make sure they're in order, x, y, z, x, y, z, so 3, negative 1, negative 1, and 2, 1, 2, 1, and 4. I'm going to put them in like this. Remember that each row in your new matrix came from an equation, and each column represents a variable or a constant. This is the x column, the y column, the z column, and this is the constants column. I just kind of wrote a brief summary of the steps of gauss jordan elimination. There's lots of different ways to do it. This is a way that works every time. Make the unit columns from left to right. Remember that a unit column contains one one and everything else zeros, all other entries. We want the leading ones in a stair step, the one one position, um, the two two position, the three three position, if you have something that looks just like this. Um, it could be the one one and the two three if this is a zero here, and so on. But the ones need to be in a stair step. For the process, we're going to make the leading ones first. Only if it's the very first one in the 1-1 one, one entry, you can interchange two rows. Otherwise, we use row operation 2, which says 1 over the number to change times the row to change gives the row to change. You're multiplying by the multiplicative inverse of that number, so you get 1. Okay, so we want to change that 3 right here change the 3 in the 1-1 one, one entry to a 1. I can multiply everything by 1 third, which gives me a 1 here, but then I'd have fractions. If you don't want to do that, for the first step, you can just interchange two rows if there's a 1 in that same column. And there is for us. So I would do row 1 and interchange that with row 2. So my new row 1 is 1, 2, 1, 4. My new row 2 is 3, negative 1, negative 1, and 2. So that was really easy. I have my 1 right here. I want to point out something else real quick before we get going too much further. If you notice, this matrix I wrote over here as my goal has three rows, row 1, row 2, row 3. We don't have three rows in our original um, augmented matrix, so we're not going to have this. So our answer is going to look a little bit different, but again, we're still going to use this as our prototype. This is still our goal. It's going to be modified slightly. The next thing we want to do is we want to change this 3 in the 2-1 entry to a 0. We're going to do that with this row operation 3, we take the negative of the number we're trying to change. So I want that 3 to be a 0, so I want to multiply by negative 3 times the row with the leading 1, row 1. I'm going to add that to row 2 and put that back in row 2. So here's your operation here. What you're trying to do is create a 0. We are limited on our row operations. We can multiply every row by a constant. We can interchange two rows, and then row operation three is we can, if we're trying to change a row, we can add that row to a multiple of another row. So we're trying to create a zero. The only option is to use row operation three. And we need to figure out what do we add to three to get zero. Well, it's negative three. If you make that one first, it's very easy to multiply by the additive inverse. So you get negative three plus three. I'll show you. Here's the scratch work. So we have negative 3 times row 1, that's negative 3, negative 6, negative 3, negative 12. I add that to row 2, 3, negative 1, negative 1, and 2. I get 0, negative 7, negative 4, and negative 10. That is my new row 2. 1, 2, 1, 4, 0, negative 7, negative 4, negative 10. 
If I look at my goal, I got my zero here. This is a unit column. We successfully pivoted on the 1-1 one, one entry. We made a unit column. Now we're going to move over and make the next unit column. So we are going to change the negative 7 in the 2-2 two, two entry to a 1. This guy right here. Because it's not the 1-1 one, one entry, I can't interchange two rows. That would screw up the work I'd already done. So I want to use row operation 2, which tells me to do 1 over the number I'm trying to change, I'm trying to change that negative 7, so 1 over negative 7 times the row to change, it's in row 2, put that back in row 2. I'm not changing row 1, so I'm going to rewrite it, 1, 2, 1, 4. Multiply every entry in row 2 by negative 1 over 7, so 0, 1. Now be real careful here. I have negative 4 over 1 times negative 1 over 7. Multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, but I have two negatives, so I get a positive 4 over 7. Same thing here, I get positive 10 over 7. Looking at my goal, I got my 1. Now I want to change the 2 in the 1, 2 entry to a 0. Use this row operation here. The negative of the number to change negative 2 times the row with the leading 1, that's row 2, row 2 rather. I'm going to add that to the row I'm trying to change, I'm trying to change row 1, put it back in row 1. It's my scratch. So I get 0, 2, negative 2 rather. Then I get negative 8 over 7 negative 20 over 7 because you're multiplying you have 4 over 7 times negative 2 over 1 top times top bottom times bottom I'm going to add that to row 1 1 2 1 4 1 0 now I'm going to add fractions I have negative 8 over 7 I'm going to add that to 1 well 1 is like 1 over 1. If I need the bottom to be 7, I multiply the bottom by 7. But I, so I don't change the number, I also have to multiply the top by 7. So this is 7 over 7. This is negative 1 over 7. Same thing here, I have negative 20 over 7 plus 4. 4 over 1, multiply the top and bottom by 7, that's 28 over 7. That is my new row 1, 1, 0, negative 1 over 7, 8 over 7, and then I rewrite row 2, 0, 1, 4 over 7, 10 over 7, okay? I have two unit columns now. I have one here and I have one here. I successfully pivoted on the 2-2 two, two entry. I made a unit column and the 1 is in the 2-2 two, two spot. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back up and look at my goal. Got a unit column. Now the next thing I would try to do is get a 1 in the 3-3 three, three spot. We get that leading 1. There is no 3-3 three, three entry, right? So we can't go any further. Is this in row reduced form? Okay, are my ones in a stair step? Yes, they are. If I have a leading one, does that column a unit column? Yes. This one doesn't have to be because there's not a leading one there. So this is in row reduced echelon form. So I can just read off my answers. Remember this was the x column, the y column, the z column. So I have x minus 1 over 7 z equals 8 sevenths and I have y plus 4 over 7 z 
equals 10 sevenths. But we want an answer, x equals stuff, y equals stuff, z equals stuff. So we need to modify this a little bit. If you notice, both of these equations have z's in them. So I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to change um, them a little bit. I'm going to move the z's to the other side. So I have x equals 1 over 7z plus 8 over 7. And y equals negative 4 over 7z plus 10 over 7. Just moved my z over, added z to both sides and subtracted z to both sides. Okay, and then I say that z is equal to z. So you might see your answer like this, 1 over 7z plus 8 over 7, negative 4 over 7z plus 10 over 7, and z. Sometimes you'll have this, you'll say, um, let, let z equal t, and that's going to be a real number. So then x is 1 over 7t plus 8 sevenths. y is negative 4 over 7t plus 10 sevenths. And z is equal to t. So you might see the answer written like this. Whoops. You might see the answer written like this, or like this, or like this. If you notice, there are infinitely many solutions. They're all related to each other, but they're definitely infinitely many because Z can be anything. There's no restrictions on Z. So there you go.